What's up guys, it's Wolf from From Scratch and welcome back to another Civilization 5 guide. Last time I did the Mongolian civilization led by Genghis Khan. Great Captain Kirk scene. Uh, <laughs> uh, Captain Kirk aside, uh, really one of my favorite domination suits, the Keshik, is by far one of my favorite units and supplemented with the Khan, an absolutely amazing the actual mobile great general which can keep pace with a large powerful cavalry force so check out that guide from last week if you want to check out Genghis Khan and Mongol terror this week I'm doing another another civilization as you would expect I'm doing another civ from vanilla civilization 5 I think I've gone past it there we go doing the Siamese civ led by Ram Kham Hang whatever how, how you pronounce that into it battle and cunning diplomacy, the tiny kingdom grew into a mighty empire, an empire which would dominate Southeast Asia for more than a century. Oh, wise and puissant King Rom Komang, your people need you to once again lead them to greatness, and you use your wits and strength of arms to protect your people and defeat your foes. Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? So as you can see, Siam's special ability is Father Governs Children, which is referring to the king and his subjects. Father Governs Children involves all the food, culture and faith from friendly city-states, which involves city-states that are friendly and allied to you. Their, what they give to you, their food, culture and faith, are increased by 50%. So, practically, if a city-state gives you four... if a city-state would normally give you four culture per turn, Siam receives six which, as you can see, after a while, does stack up. There's another part of the special ability which is sort of acting incognito here, is that units gifted from a militaristic city-state start from you, given to you, with 10 extra experiences, as well as whatever barracks and armories that city-state has. This is also incognito with any luxuries from mercantile city-states give you 50% more happiness. Two little aspects which are sort of incognito in the special ability, but the, as you can already start to see, Siam's focus is around city-states and what they give to you. So already we can see, in terms of social policies, patronage is the way to go, and our whole strategy overall will be revolving around city-states and our relationships with them. So, the special ability out of the way, let's move to their unique building. So upon researching education, you'll unlock Siam's unique building, the Watt. The Watt replaces the university, and it, it retains quite similar to its original counterpart, except added to it is the three extra culture. So it's not extremely groundbreaking, it's just nice. Adds a nice little extra bit of culture, which in large, lots and lots of cities does add up, but really, it is always good to to beeline to education anyhow because having universities early means you can get science output going and especially if you do have a good jungle start then it means you can really 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 start pumping out science from those jungle tiles which I've found Siam sometimes has a tendency to start in although that is not a proven fact. There is a little fun fact about the what however. If we go into our social policies we see legalism where we get a free culture building. Because of the culture added to the what, then, for some bizarre reason, the game also adds this as a, for, as a culture, thinks of the what as a culture building. So, in our first four cities, if we already have amphitheatres in all of our cities, but we don't have opera houses, for example, if we trigger legalism, then we can have free what's, which is a nice little fun fact, nice little fun tip, which for some reason works, don't know why, but hey, that three culture is good for something. So let's move on to the unique unit. Right 
So upon researching chivalry, you'll unlock Siam's unique unit, the Norizan's Elephant. The Norizan's Elephant differs from the Knight, which it replaces, in that it has 25 combat strength compared to the Knight's 20, but it only has the 3 movement compared to the Knight's 4. The, Nor the Elephant is rather less of a Knight and more of a stronger Pikeman, in which it has 50% combat bonus to mounted units. So overall, this is a, oops, good, this is overall a, it's a tougher, faster, and a much better, more defensive pikeman than really a mounted unit, and it suits much better for a defensive strategy than a more offensive one, due to the fact that it is a cavalry unit, so it's not going to be the best for city taking, and the fact that it has less movement and more of its specialised nature as an anti-cav unit. But, as we can see, it's quite fitting. Elephants and elephants. And hey, it's got spears, which is always cool. All elephants are cool in my book, so bonus kudos. So, after we get all these... Oh, we ran out of money. So, to summarise Siam as a, as a whole, firstly, looking at their social policies. Siam can go wide or tall. Tall being few cities with high population, better suited to the freedom ideology, which is roughly gonna you're gonna have roughly aim to about six cities, six to eight, eight, probably not so much, but six definitely, six at most for freedom, or going wider, having roughly aiming more ten more t to take full advantage of order. Either way, your unique building, the what, will benefit from this and you will have a nice little culture boost. Three culture will add up quite nicely here. The Norizan Elephant is less of a defensive unit for this aim, and it should be suited for defensive combat. Of all the social policies, as you can see I've gone for a traditional liberty kickstarter, of all the social policies, patronage is a must. Regardless of what victory conditions you want, to get full advantage out of your special ability, you must go patronage. Their special ability is what makes Siam unique. If you do not take advantage of that special ability, then Siam becomes a bit unremarkable. And overall, because of their special ability, Siam's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades civilization. They're suited to lots of victories, less so domination because of, because of their playstyle, play but definitely diplomatic being probably the most suited due to their emphasis on city-states, but also cultural victory due to the increased culture given to, by city-states, which does, of course, add up in the end. In terms of how the AI plays, rum hum rum hum, I'm not even going to pronounce it, the AI Civ <laughs> does not really, really hates warmongers. If you're playing a domination Civ, he's probably going to be the first to denounce you. However, he doesn't really focus on a diplomatic victory, preferring a cultural or scientific unit. When coming up against their unique unit, most likely in an offensive ca campaign, as Siam is not really a do warmongering sieve and is unlikely to declare war on you, treating the Norwegian's elephant with respect, treat them really like a really strong pikeman. As so obviously, don't send your knights or cav cavalry straight into the elephants. And in fact, the elephant Funnily enough, as we had Mongolia last week, is the perfect counter to the Keshik. Stronger, however it can't chase it down, having two less movement points compared to the Keshik. Finally, in terms of going tall or going wide, personally, it goes down to preference. If you're going for a cultural victory, obviously going tall, and freedom is obviously going to be your best ideology. However, if you're going diplomatic, either or does work, obviously. If you're not going to be concerned too much with culture, and you don't mind using your elephants a more aggress aggressively, as well as taking on a few cities, more than six, more into the ten range, then definitely order is probably the way to go, and therefore diplomatic. And the ide ideological tenets such as skyscrapers and so on, free thought giving you extra happiness from your university replacement, the what, will be quite nice. However, in freedom, of course, we do have the emphasis on gold producing buildings, happiness bonuses to that capitalism, I believe the social policy tenant is called. So either or, 
it really does come down to your preferred playstyle. That's what makes the arm really a good jack of all trades sieve. The pre Poland, p per se, vanilla Poland. So, that's my guide to the Siamese silver civilization. Really, really, civilization that must emphasize city state usage, otherwise, they do become a bit unremarkable. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and joining me for this Civilization 5 guide. As always, stay tuned for more. Like, comment, subscribe. I would, don't mind reading any other strategies you have for the Siamese Civilization. Check in next week for another Civilization 5 guide. I will keep pumping them out for you. Thanks for watching, as always. Stay tuned for more. Wolf out.